As we welcome up Jordan Thompson, Keith Wenning, and Zach Dysert. Come on up, guys. Well, first, you're, you're going to be a father. Let's, uh, let's talk about that. What's that feel like to be a dad here soon? It's exciting. Um, a little scary <laughs> at the same time. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we uh, are excited. My wife's excited. Um, she's the youngest of four in her family, and she's the first one in her family that's, that has a kid on the way. So her mom and dad are, are thrilled and, and everything. And for my family, it's, it's my mom and dad's eighth grandkid. Wow. So um, it'll be here in November, and we're, uh, we're ready. I mean, it's been together for two and a half years, married for two and a half years. So we, uh, we're excited. All right. Well, family, cold water, I mean, it goes hand in hand. There, there's so many cousins and, and all that stuff. How, how did that equip you? for getting ready to play college football and getting ready to, to be in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, you know, Coldwater, the community itself, it's, it has such a backing uh, from high school football. Um, you know, going to Ball State, playing at Ball State, you know, it's only an hour away. Every home game, there would be a couple hundred people from Coldwater that would travel over on Saturday and, and come watch. And, and it just shows a lot of, a lot of character that, that comes from Coldwater. And, you know, just like all, all the small towns around, you know, everybody mm -hmm. has, you know, pretty tight knit communities and stuff like that. So, you know, it's it's a place that we want to settle. Um, we bought a house last July. Uh, so it's it's definitely been good, um, you know, trying to transition through. You know, I've been on a couple teams as well in the NFL. So kind of bouncing around just like some of these other guys. But um, definitely to have a place to call home um, in a good community like Coldwater, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing to have the, the backing and you know, the family-like atmosphere. Jordan from Mac Country as well over in Rockford Parkway. Uh, been flying planes recently. Well, how, how did that hobby come about, and, and can you take anyone up that wants to go up sometime? Absolutely, I can do that. Uh, <laughs> no, so I was in Detroit there, and uh, I tore my ACL, and so you immediately, you know, you have the surgery and start doing rehab. In my rehab schedule, I would go in at, uh, I would rehab from like 7.30 to 1, and then, then I was done. And I'm a big believer in that continual, you know, you got to use your brain or you lose it. And, you know, that you got to continue to learn something or read something. And so, you know, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, there's still a lot of daylight left. And uh, so I went to the airport and I walked in the one day and I said, I want to learn how to fly. And That's so all you do? You just go to the just airport? Just go to the airport, Okay, yeah. good to know. <laughs> and it uh, took me four months to get my private pilot's license. And I, I tell you, it's been, you know, the, the I guess the sense of calm or the, the, the escape from reality that, you know, football or athletics brought me. Mm. I've, I've kind of found that with uh, flying airplanes. And it's, you know, a lot of times it's just me and the plane and we're up there a couple thousand feet. And I, I don't know, it's just a different, uh, different perspective. A uh, different way to see God's beauty below, and uh, it's a lot of fun. How often do you find yourself up just, just praying or, or thanking God for, for what you're seeing below? Man, uh, really about every time you go up, because <laughs> you always see something new. Well, <laughs> probably when you come down, I guess. <laughs> Keith's not going with you, Jordan. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but man, there's some beautiful places in this world, and uh, I had the opportunity. Uh, I've flown all through the Bahamas. I went to 17 oh. different islands in the Bahamas you know, piloting the airplane and uh, off through the Florida Keys and, I mean, all over, really, the eastern half of the U.S. And, um, you know, a good sunset or a good sunrise, and it's just, wow, that's, that's bigger than me. And uh, I'm just thankful to be able to see it from a new perspective. My wife and two kids and I were planning on driving to Texas, but would you be free to, to take us down to end of this month no. I, my airplane does not fly very fast so <laughs> you're better off driving probably. okay fair enough uh zach are you on social media um z dice four is that you or somebody else okay to be honest i'm not even sure okay because I, I don't ever get on social media okay i didn't think so but if, if you i'll give you permission right now if you want to pull up your phones and look at z dice four and there's a great picture there of Zach in a big sumo I was about outfit. To say, I don't know what it is. Okay. So. Well, let me pull it up for you. <laughs> but go ahead while you're out there. If you want, want to check it out, Z-Dice 4. Um, <laughs> you guys had competitions with the Arizona Cardinals. Yes, we did. Take us through what had to, had to be done there, what, what you guys did each week. 
Uh, it was just like a throwing competition, so we would just put a trash can in the corner of the end zone and go on like the five yard line, and you got five throws um, between four of us. And if you hit the bucket, it was one point. If you made it in, it was five points. And it didn't really matter who won. It was more about not losing. <laughs> and whoever lost, you got, you had to dress up in whatever outfit they came up with. For there the you go. That's what we. Oh doing. yeah, that would be yeah. That was a that was a good one. That'd be the See, outfit. I, I picked the certain days I wouldn't mind losing. <laughs> what were those? What what, what outfits was, did you that like? That was one of them. The fat the fat the sumo suit. Uh, <laughs> The lieutenant dangle, the, <laughs> the, the the sheriff, the cop with the short shorts. That one wasn't that bad, I didn't think. Nice. And then uh, I was a hot dog one day, too. <laughs> so that one wasn't that bad either. So there were some pretty bad ones, though, that it was kind of like, I cannot lose today. And then so, you had to go out in front of the, like, during warm-ups. Yeah. Wear that stuff out during warm-ups. Yeah. So everybody saw you. So it was a good time. Did you guys have anything like that in your experience? Nothing? Nothing with you? Jordan? Did you see any funny games like that or... No, the tight end group is usually pretty subdued, I would say. So we, we didn't <laughs> They're go. They're like the uh, bass player in the band, no yeah, motion. We're, we're in the background. A lot of times you don't see us, except Joe Fourier would dance every now and then. But, okay. uh, yeah, we're not, not into that kind of stuff. Okay. Zach out in Arizona, uh, what, what was it like? What was the culture like for the team? And then on top of that, living with Mike Fell, some of the Lima senior guys might remember, maybe some of the 80 guys went to Mike Fell uh, camps during the summer. Uh, what was that whole experience like out there? Uh, Arizona was great. Uh, the organization itself was awesome. Uh, they have so many great guys there. Like it's kind of an older coaching staff, so kind of have an old school style. But uh, it's a great, it's a great place to be. And I met some some great guys that I'm still in contact with, obviously. And uh, living with Coach Fell was never a dull moment. <laughs> that's for sure. There was always something going on. Uh, definitely got a little tiring sometimes, but. Uh, yeah, it was a great time. I was very, very blessed because, you know, he helped me more than I could ever say. I quit football until he came back to Ada. Yeah. So, uh, I, yeah, I kind of owe it all to him. Talk about that relationship between the high school coach and the player. I mean, all these years later, it's still strong. What, what's that relationship like? Yeah, uh, I got very lucky with Coach Fell because he he's obviously a player's coach. And, uh, I, like I said, I owe him a lot of things because I was, I was going to go play hockey. Uh, after my sophomore year of football, I kind of quit about halfway through the year until my dad found out. Wasn't having it <laughs> and made me quit football. I mean, quit hockey. And then two weeks later, Coach Fell showed up. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how that happened. But, uh, yeah, so then he made football fun again for me. Uh, just throwing the ball about, you know, 60 times a game. Kind of letting me do whatever I wanted. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I owed a lot to him. Kind of full circle. All three of you guys are, are three sports athletes in high school. How important was that to you in, in your development as a, a player? I think it was very important to me. I don't really understand the point of people uh, specializing in a sport, especially at a young age. Uh, I think the difference between football and basketball, I think it's a, I mean, it's a completely different sport, obviously, but it's a lot more different movements, too, so it'll help you, I think. Yeah. So I think football helps, helps basketball. I think basketball helps football. Uh, I think all the different sports in some way help each other. Yeah. So I... I I think credit that a lot just to the different sports when I grew up. How about you, Jordan? How important were those other seasons, basketball, baseball? I, I think it was very important just as a, a escape the previous season, you know, because towards the end of football season, it, I was ready for basketball and, and so forth. And I think it's just a way to unwind and focus on something different is, was always, you know, something I always looked forward to. And I, I mean, I would like to think those other sports helped athletic-wise, you know, become a better athlete and an overall, you know, move better and hand-eye coordination better and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and really, that's where my friends were. They were on the field. They were on the court. And that's who I wanted to surround myself with. And so it was kind of a – we had a core group of guys that played all three sports, and those are still my closest friends today. And, and I wouldn't trade that for anything. Keith, your cold water experience similar? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, for me, I think in high school, all I cared about was sports. Um, I felt like I was, I was such a competitor. All I wanted to do was compete. Um, and you know, a lot of my close friends, like Jordan, um, played every sport. But there were some close friends that didn't play basketball. They quit after their sophomore year or they didn't play football, quit after their sophomore, junior year or whatever. And I just I couldn't see myself doing that, taking a season off to lift or take a season off to – to do whatever just to take it off 
I wanted to be out in the the playing field or whatever it was at the time, and I think it's it's what helped me. Um, it didn't burn me out. You know what I mean? If you're only focused on one sport, you're you're, it's going to be fresh every season, and you're going to be looking forward to it, and maybe work that much harder for each one. So, um, for me, that was that was my outlook on it. Right now, a uh, free agent. How's life for Keith Wanning? What's what's the outlook right now for you? How has God kind of helped you? Perseverance is a word I think of for all three of you guys. Seven NFL teams. You know, you guys are you want to get back into it, but right, how, how right. are you feeling? You know. I was just recently with, with New York, the Giants, and, and that was my third team. Yeah. Um, ended the year with them last year and then started this whole spring with them and, and was released in the middle of May. Um, but, yeah, it's been, it's been kind of like a waiting game. You have to be patient. And, uh, you know, I think everything I always tell myself, um, everything happens for a reason. Um, you know, whatever, New York wasn't the place for me. Um, you know, honestly, I hated the traffic there anyway. It, it <laughs> it's was not just, cold water. It was terrible, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's a, it's a blessing to go to all these different cities and stuff and be on these different teams and organizations. But, um, you know, right now it's I just kind of been training and, and waiting for another opportunity, um, thinking about possibly if nothing happens this season, um, giving the CFL a shot. Um, but it's, it's, it's just a waiting game, and, and hopefully something comes about. Um, you know, I think it's – it's up in the air, and, and who knows what's going to happen. Jordan, you came back from injury. You're rehabbing, you're rehabbing, you're rehabbing with no you know, true team in sight. How, how did you persevere through that? Yeah, uh, there's so much unknown and uncertainty, and, but with that has always, you know, God's always provided an opportunity. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I tell everybody, I say, you know, I, this, these last, what, I don't know, through college and through the NFL all these years, it's, it's a wild ride. And you know, I, don't, I don't do it to prove other people wrong. I do it to prove myself right because I believe that, you know, I believed I belonged. And it's, you know, I was able to go out there and work and, and play. And uh, you know, it's, just, it's something that, you know, I've been out now for just over a year uh, from when I got released. And, you know, looking back on all the experiences and all the opportunities, you know, the game is there. That's one aspect of it. Um, but the NFL is a business, and that's an aspect of it that you can forget. You know, you <laughs> put away, you know, in yeah. the back of your mind. But the one thing that keeps drawing you back is the locker room and the people, the relationships that you meet. And that's, that's one big void right now that I have that I know I struggle with is because you get so close to those guys on the, that team because they're truly the only guys that can fully understand right what it's like to have a job one day and get cut the next and, you know, get shipped off to another city, you know, and, and you know, pack your stuff in a suitcase and go. Um, and it, you just, you know, those are the bonds and the, the memories that you hold close to is th those, those relationships that you have. So really all, all you've had at times is your Panera Bread that you got at the auction last year. Yeah, which is probably one of the most underrated silent auction items. <laughs> Is that free bread for a year that I that I bid on and won last year? And I don't know people say bread is probably unhealthy for you, but when you can get a fresh loaf of bread from Panera every single week, it's uh, that's a, a a nice thing to look forward to. So, Andy is. I just wanted to let you know that Andy's probably hoping you bid that up, but you're going to be bidding against me. So you can either drop out now. Or tomorrow, the price will probably be quite a bit higher. Okay. And the auction closes at 9 p.m. tomorrow. So take it to him. He's competitive, though, so <laughs> good luck. Seven NFL teams uh, in Dallas now. We were talking yesterday, a city you don't know anyone, really. You know, it's a brand new place. Uh, Dak Prescott came on the scene last year and, and you know, was a rookie. He came out of nowhere. Uh, what, what keeps you going, Zach? What drives you uh, on yet another team? Um... I ask myself that sometimes, but uh, I think it's just, I'm just trying to take advantage of it. I know I can't play, you know, some guys get blessed until they can play until they're 40, but I know that it's going to end one day, so I'm just trying to take advantage of it, just basically just trying to stay out of the real world until I actually have to, and uh, just, yeah, just keep playing football as long as I can, might as well just keep playing the game, and uh, as long as they keep calling, I mean, I guess I'll keep going. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But I've been blessed to see a lot of cities. Uh, I was kind of, like, piggybacking off of what Stephanie said, I was kind of like I wanted to get out of here when I was a kid. <laughs>
just because I knew that there was so much more out there. Just like my sisters, they moved to California when they like right out of college, and they just kind of told me the same thing, like get out of Ohio, kind of go see what's out there. So uh, I've been very blessed to go out uh, around the country and around the nation. I've gotten to stay in some pretty cool spots, meet some pretty cool people. So uh, I'm just trying to take advantage of it. You get cut one day, like Jordan said, one day you're here, one day you're not. But then another team comes calling. How does that kind of lift your spirits and say, well, you know, people are still interested in me? Yeah, I mean, it gives you a little bit of hope still. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you get cut, it, it does kind of suck. Uh, it kind of puts a bad taste in your mouth. Yeah. But at the same time, like Keith said, everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. uh, and you just got to keep telling yourself that. And like I said, if everything happens for a reason and if you weren't good enough, they wouldn't call, keep calling you to come back and at least give you a shot. So uh, I guess that's all, you can really ha that's all you can really ask for. You had all these coaches in, high or in college <laughs> and then all these different coordinators in the pro. Do you know basically every formation in football? Are you well versed at this point? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, but to be honest, there's only so many ways you can run a play. Yeah. You know, there's only so many ways you can line up. Uh, it's all just terminology, really. Uh, that's the biggest thing from offense to offense. But like you said, a bunch of different coaches, I think that's given me a good insight on how to uh, react and interact with a bunch of different personalities. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of a good thing for me. What have you learned in Dallas so far, a month in or so? Uh, they have really bad traffic too. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, it's kind of a circus down there. Okay. Uh, it's Jerry's <laughs> world, that's for sure. Uh, I mean, we were literally in a practice and we had to stop so he could come and fly in on his helicopter on the, on the field. Wow. I don't know. I guess there's nowhere else to land. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's a circus. There's tours getting given every minute of the day through our facility, and uh, yeah, it's 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 different. So uh, to add to that, um, AT&T Stadium, we played down there in the wild card game in 2014. Uh, so that was my first trip to Dallas uh, to play in that stadium, and I tell people to give an idea of how grand and I mean crazy that place is you know most most stadiums have concrete floor in the locker room I mean, we were walking on like porcelain tile with our, our cleats I mean it was it's it's wonderful <laughs> or, or over the top extreme I don't know what it is but <laughs> it's quite something yeah. well we appreciate you guys being here uh, remember where you're from coming back and keep persevering uh, it's an inspiration to all of us and thank you for being here all right Zach Dysert Jordan Thompson and Keith Wine.